as soon as I got to a position where we've delegated parts of the budget, my life becomes simpler and I can enjoy what I'm creating more versus stressing myself out trying to do something I'm not great at. You know what I mean? What's going on? You're listening to episode 111 of the Perspective Podcast, and I'm your host, Scotty Russell of Perspective Collective. This show is fuel for your mind and creative grind. Each week, my guests and I provide the tools for thinking bigger, overcoming adversity, and making an impact with your work. At the end of each episode, I share a listener of the week, so stick around to figure out how you can get a shout out on a future episode in the show notes as well as in the newsletter. And today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Crop Conference. Crop is a two-day celebration of creativity, community, and inspiration. They bring in the world's top creative talent like past guests, Draplin, Lisa Congdon, and Tad Carpenter. Their upcoming April 18th and 19th lineup in Baton Rouge, Louisiana is no exception. Stick around for a killer promo code, and in the meantime, check out CropCons on Instagram or go to CropCons.com for the full lineup. Next Wednesday, the 23rd, is not only an episode with my man, Ade Hogue, but I'm officially launching my beta creative coaching program. If you struggle with goal setting, finding time to grind and execute outside the day job, or you need help with passion project advice, social media strategy, or audience building tips, or even if you need help to craft and deliver the big talk on the horizon, this targeted session is for you. At 12 p.m. Central Time, I'm going to have a limited amount of five one-hour sessions available for $100 a piece at p-ccoaching.com. The cost of future coaching sessions will increase each time I open up the program, so set a reminder and jump on this now. For me personally, I've invested way more than this on -on one-on-one coaching experiences, and they've done nothing but help me get to that next level. So again, that's next Wednesday at 12 p.m. Central Time at p-ccoaching.com. I'm stoked to personally work with you in 2019 so you can take your creative grind to the next level as well. And now that we're settled in, I want to ask you, a question. Two questions, actually. So why do we wait for others' permission? Why do we wait for others to believe in us before we believe in ourselves? And this is something I wish I could tell my past self who was looking for the affirmation and acceptance of others and not realizing that it all starts inside. When you realize that you have some potential and you want it badly enough, you already have some of the main ingredients to start baking up your dream. And this is where it all lands on you. You can't sit around waiting for someone to give you the green light to make things happen. You have to roll with your gut and act on your intuition. Cue today's guest. He's a director and content creator for some of the biggest entertainers and brands in the world like Kendrick Lamar, Schoolboy Q, Mary J. Blige, Chris Brown, and EA Sports. Most recently, though, he just finished up a global tour as lead videographer and content creator for The Carters. And you heard correctly, I'm talking about Jay-Z and Beyonce. This gentleman that I'm referring to is my local legend, Cedar Falls, Iowa brother, Ben Haggerty, aka Ben Real Verse World, who is also the tribe leader of his Black With No Cream community and his Black With No Cream podcast, which airs twice a week. And it's easy to pick your jaw up off the floor when you see the amazing work he does, as well as the clientele he works with. However, I've been in the backseat watching this dude put in work nonstop, creating content since the beginning of YouTube. That's like over 10 years ago. And nobody, in my humble opinion, works harder and nobody believes in themselves and their cause more than Ben. In today's episode, Ben and I talk about his journey of chasing down and living his dream in LA, how he's organically grown a Facebook community to over 4,000 loyal creators, a typical insane day creating content on tour for the biggest global superstars. We also talk about paying your dues to gain leverage and credibility, and most importantly, we're back again putting Casey's General Store Pizza on the map. And yes, this is gas station pizza, but I love it. You can find the show notes to this episode filled with everything we talk about and a ton of Ben's rad work at perspective-collective.com slash 111. And please let me know what you think of this episode by taking a screenshot or a video of you listening and tag me and Ben on Instagram stories so we can connect. And if you're taking notes, that's also super dope. Please share that so I know what I'm saying is hitting home with you today. 
As always, keep an open mind and act on anything that resonates with you today. Let's go. Perspective Podcast family, what's going on today? I am chopping it up here with my homie Ben Haggerty, a.k.a. Ben Real Verse World, a.k.a. the leader of the Black With No Cream community. Ben, what's good, man? How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Happy post-holidays? Yes. It's raining in Iowa in the middle of December, or almost January, so So, that's weird. Yeah, this will be January something when it comes out, but so what's new for you? You are in town flying around. How how long are you in town for and when you go out? Well, first what's new is that I'm doing the first repeat guest. Yes, at, this the is the first podcast. repeat guest. <sighs> we did this a year ago. Exactly a year ago and so much shit has happened. You yeah. were already like making big waves then and even bigger waves now and even bigger waves the third time we get you on. <laughs> yeah. So for those who don't know, real quick, before we dive into this, give a brief Wikipedia page summary about yourself. So I'm a, like a director, videographer, photographer, kind of guru of all things that are creative when it comes to that. But I've been working on projects and I live in LA now from Iowa originally. And uh, yeah, I've been doing stuff. I've made like a co-edited Chris Brown's documentary almost right when I moved out to LA. That was kind of one of the first projects I started on, which sprung me into action and uh did Mary J. Blige documentary, tour with Schoolboy Q, a dope rapper out of L.A., and we did like a world tour back then. I think that's what we were, our topic point was when I came, when I was on your podcast last time. Yeah, that was pretty much, yeah, you just got off of Schoolboy Q, but even going back further in this for people who don't know, this motherfucker has been creating content since the Day early one. days of YouTube, but then we started linking up because you created music under the the group School. Schooled, yep. Schooled, and I was doing Daydream and Clothing Company, and basically we were sponsoring and repping yeah. Schooled as they would open for people like J. Cole, Big Crit, Time Flies. Damn, we did so many shows. Yeah. Chance all, the Rapper. All just, all just local stuff. Yeah, Chance before he blew up. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, so that's how we connected from there, and then you just... Went to L.A., dropped everything, moved there, and that's when you landed the Chris Brown yeah. documentary, worked yep. on that for free? Yeah, pretty much. I didn't make shit off that money. Like, that was just me trying to put in time. You know what I mean? I was just trying to pay my dues and, like, get as much action as I could in L.A., so I was just saying yes to every job. And I want to talk about this later because we kind of briefly talked about this, just shooting the shit before yeah. we started recording. I think that's a big topic to talk on, but... No, yeah, I was just, like, pay, you know, paying my dues. I was, like, I had a friend who, you know, brought me in, my homie Andrew Sandler, who was directing Chris's documentary, and he, he brought me under his wing, and I went in as an assistant editor, actually, on that film, so we just spent a lot of time editing and putting in hours and then eventually I got the co-edit edit credit when the movie finally came out and but it was it was cool for me because I was just in there and so I was in the mix and then I started working on music videos so I was doing like all of Chris did like a whole album called Royalty and we did like eight music videos so I was involved in a lot of that editing and shooting some stuff and do BTS and all that stuff so I was like I just got my foot very far in the door quickly by just being active and like you know offering myself out well, last time we talked, which would have been episode 61, perspective-collective.com slash 61, for you who want to go back, we were just saying you got off tour with uh, Schoolboy Q, and you were in the talk secretly telling me about something in the works, possibly of a big opportunity with a big name. Was I? Something related to Coachella. Oh, shit. And then everything kind of took off from you. So what has all happened, and who have you been working with over this last year? Yeah, so then... I think it was January. I started working with Beyonce for, she was getting ready for her Coachella concert. And so a friend had suggested me to work with them for video purposes and they liked it. So I, I don't know, I started doing uh, like behind the scenes type shit for her road to Coachella because they were rehearsing for a couple months. And so got, introduced to them that way and then uh just a word of mouth yeah word of mouth you killed it for something else and someone recommended yeah it was nuts it was like it was like a friend of a friend that suggested me to someone because they saw an email that said they needed someone like me you know i mean it was one of those things so uh shout out to my homie tara and then um where were you when you got like hit up for it was it an email or what uh it was a text and i wasn't even told who the artist was i was just told to like go have a meeting and bring my camera shit to the spot and so i got there and they're like oh yeah just go and do this this and that and i'm like what what are we doing and it's like for beyonce i'm like oh shit oh shit i have to film that right now this is crazy so i just had to like make a video that day and like try to impress them with like show them what i could do and got a call back so it was cool then that kind of progressed really quickly into coachella and somehow I finessed the position of being like her lead camera operator on like a steady cam setup for like my camera would live stream to the world and on the big screens that played 
during Coachella. That was yours? Yeah, it was my camera. So, like, that first shot in her Coachella performance, you could watch it on the live stream that night or see it live, is my camera. Like, there's this whole choreographed movement where I, like, lift up the camera and all of a sudden you see, like, the dancers and they move out of the way and then there's Beyonce and that's, like, the, her first reveal and she hadn't performed in, like, over a year or something and had just had the twins. and So it was a big deal. It was her first performance back and it was such a massive performance and my camera was, like, like we had so many choreographed moves between me and her fucking Destiny's Child. Like, I brought Destiny's his child out to like the middle of Coachella. Say my name. Yeah, say my name. it was for real. It was nuts. It was like really surreal shit, and and that was just by putting in a shit ton of work. And while I was there during behind doing behind the scenes stuff, I just shot something with like a my my stabilizer, and they liked it, and and so, somehow that turned into me like doing doing that job. You know what I mean? And what did it lead to from there? Then they liked me, so they brought me on her tour with Jay Z, like they uh, the on the run two tour. So we fucking went all around the world literally like we were in Paris and did all of Europe and the UK then we came to the US did all of that then we flew to Af- South Africa and Dubai India yeah you like, just got back from Dubai yeah, and India literally like craziest stories yeah it was, it's been a year I'm just like I've been changing diapers dog <laughs> <laughs> that's just crazy as hell though too like that's I applaud to you Beyonce. bro no. <laughs> we already talked about this I babysat one night and that shit was terrifying so shout out to you for fucking doing the, the hardest job on earth dad life being a mom is the hardest job on earth shout out to your wife for being doing the Sh- hardest shout job out on to earth M Slice yeah God she's damn. killing it Skid Skidmark. Skidmark, <laughs> that little Skidmark Skididdle. That I got thirty nicknames yeah, for little does. Scotty. So now that you're back, yeah, what's next? I don't know. Um, I you know you said it, Black with No Cream at the beginning. That's been my baby for like the last year and a half. What almost. is Black with No Cream? So let's get into that. After Q's tour, when I did school with Q's tour, I noticed like a lot of creators were hitting me up for, and I'm sure it happens to you all the time. Just when you start having some sort of traction online, you it's easy to access you. And so people would start messaging me about anything. They'd ask me questions about my gear. They'd ask me questions about how I got to where I'm at. They'd ask me for advice on how they should deal with their clients and all this shit. And it was a, an insane amount. And that was even at a low level. And now it's even it's insane now. But I was getting all these messages. So I, I created like an online private place on Facebook, just a private group group and uh, allowed everyone to like sign up and get into this private group if they were a creator of any kind. So it's grown since the launch to 4,000 members. And I think it's pushing like 4,100 or something. So it's, it's starting to like pick up speed, but 4,100 members that went through this dumb sign up process that I made on my website, <laughs> where it's just like all these things you had to you fill call up. it dumb, but, but for me, it's cool. Cause I can learn about them. You know what I mean? I can really, and from a marketing standpoint, you know great. what your audience is wanting and yeah. needing so you can create content towards it and speak in their language. Like it's really not dumb. It's, it's hella strategic. Yeah. It, it's a win-win for everyone. Cause then I can really, like you said, like f- cater to them in a way that uh, I don't think I would be able to. What are to some of those onboarding questions? just what kind of creator are you? What, what do you want to learn? Where do you want to be in five years? What do you want to do in 10 years? Like, what's your biggest strength? Like, what do you, what's your biggest this weakness? Is like a Google form or the answer yeah. right there? No, it's Google form. I think it's, so you go blackwindowcream.com slash join or bwnc.com slash join. And then it has like my video that tells you, cause so many people message me and they're like, Hey, I have a question. I'm like, yo, I have a thing for you. It'll make sense. Just go to this link and watch the video. I promise. So you don't you. send them directly to Facebook. No. Cause then, and, and you can do it low key. I don't like people knowing this. Like I prefer that you go to the site so I can have you fill it out. But you could, if you just search black window cream, you'll find it. And it sucks because there's only like, I'm so limited with what I can do in groups and hiding it from the public. Like yeah. you can't do that unless it's stupid. Like if I had it completely private, I, I wouldn't like, be able to I have like a direct your link. onboarding process yeah. for it for sure. Like, it, like I said, it's a win-win. So like taking the time out of your day to do it versus just cheating and going in there, like I'll approve you. I used to not approve you if you didn't have it filled out and there's a way that it tells me if you did or not. But, um, now it's just so, so much. I, I, I'm like, fuck. All right. If I can at least have like 70% of the people are filling at that out. At least you have this barrier. So at least it's getting the right people in. Cause you probably have 10,000, but it could just be right. Lurkers or people just want exactly. to promote themselves yeah. in a destructive And we're manner. trying to be like very active in, in monitoring the group too. And I'm trying to expand my squad so that we can like stay on top of it. Cause there's so many people that are doing that shit where they'll just share something and say, follow me on Instagram. And I'm trying to eliminate that. The whole goal of this group is for creators to come in and share information that is going to add value to everyone else's life, which is cool because my problem is if you call, if you're text or DMing me and you're saying, Hey, I want to get into photography and I'm looking at this camera, like what should I buy? And you don't tell me your budget. You don't tell me what you're shooting professionally or just what you vague. do. You're just so vague. And you just ask me like I'm supposed to know at least by asking that in the group, if I don't answer it, 
there's going to be someone that's like just as talented, if not more talented than me at that shit or whatever you're trying to be professional in. They'll have the answer for you. And it's fucking working. It's amazing. Like ever since day one, I've seen it. You can't answer everything. So why not build a platform or a community where like many people can help answer the question and then you can sprinkle yourself in when you have the time. Yeah. Just because I can't answer the question doesn't mean that there's not a person that's in like fucking Arkansas that's not just killing it in the wedding game or is an insane illustrator out of Cedar Falls, Iowa that could pop in and answer a question whenever they see that pop up in their feed like, hey, I have a question about design or should I get this tablet or whatever. Like it's always almost every person that posts a question gets that shit answered. And what's cool is it's not just questions. It's people that are sharing their work and they're breaking down how they did it, which is sick. Like, and I try to encourage that more. Like Transparency. Don't, yeah, don't just promote your Instagram. Like, if you're killing it in the group, people will find out where how they can follow you. You know what I mean? It's not it's not supposed to be just, like, a fucking pod, or whatever those things are called, like uh, Instagram yeah, pods Instagram and shit. Instagram pods, yeah. yeah they okay, try to do it I, all I just the time. posted, let's let everybody yeah, comment on yeah. the same time. I don't like that. Yeah, it's cornball. But yeah. I think that this is an organic way. And then I started the podcast, too, which you were on as a guest. I'm trying to remember what, what episode. Uh, 30 or 10 or 5 or I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere in Just there. look at Black Widow Creep Podcast. You what does Black Widow Creep mean? Uh, so it's I just take my fucking coffee, Black Widow Cream. That's it. I, I, as a creator, when I'm creating, I'm literally chugging this shit. Just, it's become an addiction, I think. No rock stars, no monsters, just nah. black with no cream. If I have to, if it comes down to, like, if I'm doing a job, like, and you've had three cups of coffee, your mouth kind of has that, like, I can't take it anymore. So I'll do a Red Bull or some shit like that. But but that's what it was. I was, like, with, with a couple friends, and we were creating. And this actually is funny because it pulls off of the poster that I got from you. Um, we were creating, and I had said something to them, like, yo, Okay, we need to decide a name for this group. Like, do you guys drink coffee, Monster, or like Mountain Dew or Red Bull? And everyone was like, coffee. And I was like, cool. Do you put cream and sugar in it or not? And most of the people were like, nah. I'm like, me either. Black Widow Cream. And then like days, like I don't even know how, how long after, Lauren was sitting there and she's like, Ben, look at the poster that's above our coffee machine. I looked up and it says- Save eight hours save a Save eight day. hours a day. No cream, no sugar. Yeah, no cream, no sugar. And I'm staring at it. I'm like, oh my God. This like I was reading your poster or somehow yeah like subconsciously like have I see it every day I, I love it's in the video every time every time it's just sitting on my kitchen table I have it yeah I have the sky's poster is like our YouTube video background right now so it's dope yeah it's fucking crazy but anyway yeah so it's just a my my goal is I just want to create the best place for people to get educated I feel like I didn't have that coming up and it doesn't exist I know you're doing the same thing too after we talked you started a, a Facebook group too. Yeah, I've been wanting to do it forever, and finally, like, you made me get over that imposter syndrome, like, oh, I'm making a group, everybody's going to think it's about me. Well, no, no, it's not. It's just a community for like-minded folks. Right, it's awesome, and it's cool because, like, say, like, I've had my friend Josh, who has a YouTube channel on Olufemi Tutorials, and he has a massive channel, so whenever he has a video where he has me come on as a guest, he'll be like, oh, tell me about Black Widow Cream, and he'll tell people to go join it, and then I have people that are coming in that are looking forward to talking to Josh. They don't even know who the fuck I am, so Mm -hmm. my goal is that it should be bigger than me. Like, I'm only good at a few things so those few things like are cool but i want to make it so that everyone that's interested in everything could participate and be a part of this and just have it be like a a space where we can all like have camaraderie and like build friendships it's a tribe. yeah it is and it's fucking crazy dude i was in amsterdam and, and did a black and cream meetup not me like three people that's it just three people that were like hey can you get coffee consider it a meetup but we literally were like went to a coffee shop down the street from my hotel and i met three people that fucked with black and no cream in Amsterdam. I'm from Iowa. And and people don't realize where in Iowa we are. Just a small, it doesn't even small matter. Just place Iowa's with small. not lots of yeah. opportunities. So no. we're in like the fourth or fifth biggest city exactly. when even the capital is way smaller than. Facts. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's insane. It's, it's very insane. Amsterdam, bro. And this is like one of, I had, I met with several black, I, I didn't even have enough time to meet with, if I would have been able to do it, but I, there was people in South Africa that wanted to do a meetup. That shit's crazy. I see like people in London talking about meetups. Yeah, yeah, that's fucking crazy. But like what was cool was the two people, there was a guy and a girl or whatever that were there and they were all part of Black and No Cream, but they didn't know each other. And in that meeting, I saw them build a relationship where they were like, all right, cool, yo, I could actually use you on my jobs and you could use me on your that's jobs. So dope. And they were going to make money together. And that's like the coolest part. It's the connection and the relationship that yeah. aspect of things because you and me are all like, relationships are everything. You can know everything, yes. but- relationships are where it's at yep. and you're building a place for like people to connect. It's bigger than you. Yeah. B- both of us were trying to create something way bigger than ourselves. Yeah. And that's, that's, it's working. Distilled out. Yeah. That's the main point of all of this. It's fucking awesome. So let's talk more about the podcast then. You just moved it uh, twice a week. You, you do interviews and you just started something solo episodes. The Welcome morning to roast. the solo yeah. episode. The morning roast. Like dude, I, I love puns and wordplay yeah. and that's just, that's, 
so creative, right? Clever, love it. I, t- I definitely study your solo episodes and and use it as a reference when I was talking about. Dude, I can Dave. give you a whole outline of how I do everything. You, your shit is nuts. But you're so tedious with your shit too. You gotta let go. Speaking helps. I know. You gotta let go. Yeah. Like he's saying, he never does in- live interviews and shit. Like he's killing this. This is easy. And and video. I'm trying to get this guy to do video I so know, you guys can I'm fucking on it. It, enjoy uh, this podcast. There's on things YouTube. I'm scared of, so I need to like dive into those clearly. It's about fresh lean haircut. into the fear. You're good to go, bro. I know. We go suave <laughs> over here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, the podcast. I just try to interview my friends that are killing it in the industry to try to like juice like squeeze the juice out of them for as as far as like tidbits go tips and tricks and ideas and theories and ways to like avoid mistakes you know what i mean if i could if i can in this interview if i could tell you mistakes i made like people think oh he co-edited chris brown's documentary that shit premiered in theaters around the world and went uh on a huge launch on netflix like it was massive and i made like fucking no money you know what i mean like People don't get that shit. I come home and I'll have those questions all the time, especially right now with Christmas and Beyonce and shit. How much money do you make on that? Man, Beyonce is rich. It's like people, A, fucking mind your own business. And B, like they just have this stigma of, you know, oh, you did it. You did this job with some superstar artist. You probably made a shit ton of money. You're probably good. You could probably, you know, buy the house, buy all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, right. That's like, there's so many things that I've done that are stepping stones to the check. You know what I mean? I may make the shittiest amount of money on the dopest job ever and then turn around and do a job that is not that cool to me and make it the fattest check. Anymore. You know what yep. I mean? It's so dumb, but totally that's just how it. it is. So it's like all of it to me is everything has been pointing towards doing this black window cream thing. And so I, I like to elevate it where I think that black window cream is where I want to put all my eggs in because I might do this and do all this and whatever. All it is is just getting credibility and to have like your fucking roster of things you've done underneath your name you know what i mean like we summarized it in the beginning but i've done so much shit since that's i moved like to the, la the umbrella the 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 parent thing and then you have all these different channels that it's, come out of yeah. like podcast community as um, long as like it's a, like a my, hiring team yeah like a blue check mark it, yeah. like for some reason that means so much to so many people you know what i mean like it, he's a verified source so if i can just be a verified source i'm like all right cool i've done all this shit so it means that i can do it so that makes me in a position where i could at least host a place where i could teach others whereas i see a lot of people shoot one BTS video in LA and then all of a sudden they're a fucking guru and they have their YouTube channel of like 5,000 subs and they sit there and be like, I'm going to put my courses together. I'm going to do all this shit. And they have no idea what they're doing. I see that happen all the time and it's fucked up because there's so many people teaching the wrong shit to people. You know what I mean? And I'm not an expert in much. You know what I mean? I've just done certain things and I have succeeded in it and had some mild success. So it's cool to be able to say, all right, I can turn around and at least teach things on this and I can talk Speak to people. Speak from experience and teach things you know. Yeah, and talk to people that are clutch at what they do you know what i mean if like if you don't know what the fuck you're talking about then you go and seek those people who know exactly. those topics if your audience is craving x y and z and you only know how to do x. w yeah yeah <laughs> like that's it like you go talk to the experienced people and try to get it out of them like that's the best i can do so it, it feels good to be in a spot where i can bring that in and it's not all about me and i'm not sitting here trying to talk about shit i don't understand the podcast is me literally asking questions and learning as it happens. So it's cool for me because I get to learn, hear dope stories, and then regurgitate that shit back to my audience. So if someone wants to listen, how? What days is it out? Where can they listen? So at? the morning roast is every Wednesday. It sucks because tour, tour is intense. Like I try, I wanted to try to maintain doing the interviews and stuff on the road, and, and it was just super hard. I couldn't. Are you sp- bringing like the H6 with you in this, this whole game? Yeah, I had all my... My podcast shit with me, I think I recorded three episodes when I was on tour. And it was just solo episodes. Me and Dave, who's like my right hand in Black Widow Cream right now, we just like set up somewhere. We set up one, we did one podcast. It was cool because we did outside and we just, it was awkward as fuck because we did, now you would have a heart attack. It was like doing this podcast with video, sitting in a public space where people were walking in front of yeah. us all the whole time. And we're just sitting here with looking like goons with these <laughs> headphones on and just talking. But like, it was cool. I don't remember where I was. It was in Europe somewhere, dude. And the fucking background was so dope. And it was like sunset. And it was like, it's a place where they have all those locks on the bridge. Uh, like everyone comes over and puts like a lock on the bridge and throws a key in the water or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It was incredible, but it was cool to be able to do that. I just didn't have enough time to do it all the time. So I hated that. Like I hate, that's the only thing I hate about tour is my life like freezes. That's just inspire me to stop playing it so fucking small in my office. Yeah. People don't the care. They just zone. want, they just want the they content. Want the content. People and just, just want like, to hear. I'm going to give them what they want, but yeah. I want to like 
push myself no to go, yeah so this you, is this is this yeah. is good no, i'm you. hijacking this right now but um, oh but anyway wednesdays is the morning roast which is like a deep dive into topics that i feel are like common asked questions in black under cream so you're literally sourcing your community's yeah, questions totally and we even ask them to like you know talk like what do you want us to talk about like and some people go, oh what do i how, how do contracts that's work? how you make sure you're creating relevant content in the first place exactly. listen yeah. and then answer absolutely provide. absolutely otherwise we'd be sitting here like damn what should we talk about this wednesday and then we just go in the group and see like the last most common How question long are those solo episodes we try to keep them like 20 minutes or less cool so they're quick they're you know enough scripted. to get your cup co- of uh, coffee going that's right so yeah. just listen to it in the morning whenever you want and just get yourself motivated like we just try to amp you up and then on on sundays i do interviews so everything's been paused right now i got sick as fuck when i came back from africa i haven't had t- i was supposed to record like four or five episodes when i was in la and I didn't. I had to cancel all of them because I just like was contagious and nasty and dying in my bed. But anyway, 2019 is right around the corner, bro. So, so how are you building a queue? Building a queue, what's like like a mean? queue of episodes. You know, like are oh, you recording? I'm behind. I need to. That's what I would prefer to do is record, like be able to record multiple episodes in a week, so I could just stack up and not have to be so like rushed. Do and, multiple interviews, so people have to be on site for your interviews, yeah, right? Yeah, which is challenging as fuck. So it's like, but I live per- in LA, so yeah, it makes yeah. it a lot easier, and that's why I'm trying to get into a spot where I can. I'm gonna. Like, I'm going to start, like, a Patreon and do, like, whatever, all that shit and try to get some sponsors. But I want to rent a spot in L.A. Because right now I'm just doing it on like my kitchen. Like a studio space or yeah, something? Yeah, and just have a space where I could just fully create out of. And it's just 24-hour 24 24 hour access. And, you know, people, my interns could come in and work. And, like, me and Dave could be in there working when he moves to L.A. He's, he lives in Texas right now. Which Dave's story is crazy. And I want to talk about that, paying your dues until you get paid and land out. Exactly. That'll be the next segment Yeah, because what, we're we, what did we say right before we started this? It was, like, ta- the idea of, like, it pay paid and unpaid internships and like i think there's a place for paid internships which honestly i've never had a paid internship i don't think i've ever had a paid internship I had one. you did you yeah but i didn't get the skills out of it i needed right right yeah so to me and this isn't necessarily even internships it's just a skill set that you want to learn or an opportunity you want right okay well let's talk about yeah, this then let's do it it's such a good topic i think i want to like- talk about paying your dues to get paid I'm in a field where a lot of people are like activists of don't do free exposure work, you know, know your worth, this and that. But I'm just like, for me, I would never have been able to land high paying multi-thousand dollar uh, mural gigs had I not volunteered like my first three jobs for free. 100%. You know, And, and granted, a lot of them are small local businesses or nonprofits. I get it. If it's like a major, you know, like Apple hit me up or something, you know, that's a little bit different. I get it. But- there's a lot of people who are just like, nope, know your worth, don't do anything for free, exposure doesn't pay the bills, yada, yada. And there's some truth to that, but also you're in the beginning stages, like for your story. And then let's talk about Dave too, because mm-hmm. you outsource and get a lot of help through your community, but that's like open crazy doors for them. So first talk about you and then talk about your situation with Dave, because this was awesome. Right. It's cool because I feel like my story is very similar to Dave's story now. So so and what's Dave's last name? I want to make sure Malave. we link him. Malave. David Malave. Okay, this is the goat. Link follow him up on in Instagram. The sh- yeah. him, follow him in the show notes. He's got some ill shots. Uh, all right, so going back to when I first moved to LA, Andrew Sandler brings me under his wing, right? And how'd you meet Andrew Sandler? Through his ex girlfriend. So my shout home, out to shout Whitney. out to her. Yeah. Okay. I, I okay. Okay. Forever. He dated Whitney. Okay. Yeah. I didn't. We, know that. Me and Andrew talk about this in my podcast. But Andrew was dating my homie. She introduced us we became nerd friends before i even moved to la and i had come out to to la once for like a little week or whatever and he brought me out on set for like a, a rehab music video the dj and then the next day was a chris brown video and i shot i somehow was supposed to just be a fly on the wall for chris's video i finessed getting to shoot bts so i was like right there filming all this shit and it was cool because the bts piece played on mtv and all this stuff and it was dope for me but i knew i needed to move back out to la so when I came out to LA, I, my homie Craig put me up at his house. I slept on the floor for like 15 months or some shit, like, like on an air mattress. mattresses yeah. with gum. A couple, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, I had to replace that mattress a couple times. And literally would be at Andrew's house every morning. Like I just made it, I, I spent all my money on Ubers and shit. I was in the Valley. He was in uh, West Hollywood. I was like going over there. Do you have like a business credit card and like an LLC for your name or anything I, like this? I or is did. this out of pocket cash? It was, it was all me paying out of, out of like just, I had like one debit card, a business debit card that I had my LLC from Iowa when I was doing Google tours and shit. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like, I remember but that. I stacked my bread in order. I knew that this was going to happen. So I invested in myself when I moved to Iowa and was willing to spend money, right. To be able to get to LA and was willing to lose money 
investing in myself. You know, it's no different than me buying. Like that's I, the key thing: invest in yourself. Not seeing something as I paid for this. You exactly. invested in yeah. yourself. That's a massive mind shift. It was things. my risk. I was like, okay, yeah. cool. If I could at least go out to LA, I have like three months of money that I could spend and lose going out, whatever it is, trying to take meetings, trying to go out and do lunches, going and like taking Ubers to go shoots and do all this shit. You know, I was willing to spend this money and lose it. And so I would spend all my money and go Uber to Andrews or wherever. And we started working on Chris's doc. And I literally didn't get money from that for like so long. I would get like money and it would be for like doing random multiple things like doing BTS on this music video while doing the Chris doc and all this shit. Like I wasn't getting paid really, which was no shame on Andrew. Was just What that, were you making money on the side then? How were you surviving? Or just I was, off the, I was, it was off my, stacking. yeah, it was off of me making money in Iowa before I came out here. I like stacked it up. So I wasn't making really shit, any money. So and how long was this for? A long time. Like not at least like nine or 10 months where I would like do little jobs here and so this almost and the whole year, but more than that, like over a year, because it was like I didn't get my first uh, my studio until I started making money, and that's when I directed a video for EA Sports. And so anyway, back rewind. If I wouldn't have done that, then I would have just been in LA and trying to get checks, and I couldn't have done that because they didn't budget for a Ben on their project when they first did it. Because <laughs> the project, for a ben. <laughs> you know what I mean? They <laughs> yeah. they started their project already and didn't have the funds. That's why I wasn't getting paid. So I was just trying to do it to get the credit. And so by doing it, it was like, all right, cool. I pay my dues. I'm doing all the shit. Eventually, I start getting some money for certain jobs and whatever. Like, I earn my keep. But I wouldn't have been able to do it without Andrew offering me the spot to do it. I didn't have any fucking credits. Why should I be co-editing a Chris Brown documentary? Like, the most uh, controversial story in pop. You know what I mean? Like, he beat Rihanna. There's there's a lot of shit to tell in that story. You know what I mean? And, and tell it truthfully. So... Why should I do that? I, I didn't do anything. I was a Google photographer in Iowa. You know what I mean? I rapped and shit. So I was like, it, Where's your credentials? There's none. There's none. How so, can you demand, pay me this amount for this? Yeah. You so, know, you, you haven't proved your worth. Exactly. But Andrew could see something in me. And so, fast forward, whatever, my life's crazy and, and it, it worked out. So, with Dave, it's cool because I needed an intern for my podcast because I just couldn't handle editing the videos. And how did you find this intern and what was your process for finding them? So in Black Widow Cream, I just made a post that said I was going to hire an, an intern. A free, it was unpaid internship. I was like, yo, I'm being upfront with this shit. I'm putting all my money into Black Widow Cream as it is. Like, I ain't got money for you. If you want to do this, it's up to you. I don't, it's up to you. And I had like maybe 25, 30 people. How big was your group at that time, approximately? Um, uh, maybe like 2000, cool. 1500, maybe something like that. And, and it was like right off the bat and then I closed it, you know? So I just said like, Hey, whoever, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. whoever does that. this quickly, like my, I'm looking for someone like a turnaround ship fast. Who's got availability and is willing to put in some hours and help me grow this thing. And Dave was the first person to respond to me and sent me, I, I basically sent everyone, um, like the, like three video files from a podcast and was said, said like do a three camera edit and I also want social bit content. So I want to see like what you would pick from this podcast to make social, you know, what do you think is valuable socially? Like what would do well on Instagram and shit. Dave came back with fire shit. He had a whole write up, like something about the way he presented his content to me was different than everyone else. Cause everyone else submitted and they were great, but he just had something about him. So he started being my intern and then, you know, two months passed by and we've been doing the podcast for a while. We hop on FaceTime or whatever and have ideas on certain elements for like content we could create and shit. And he just had an attitude about him that was like hardworking and reminded me of me, right? That Midwest grind. Yeah. And he had said something like, yo, I want to come out to LA and we could work on this together in person. And um, he lived in te uh, Texas. And I want to just, you know, if you have, if you're on set or something, I could like shadow you or whatever. And I was like, no, wait till there's something cool. Like I'm not, I mean, I ain't doing shit this week. Like don't come out here anytime soon until I have something. I'll let you know. Like literally the next week, the Beyonce thing started for Coachella and I would work like random days this with them. early 2018. Yeah. But he, he, you know, he, he wanted to come out and then they turn around they're like, Hey, you can hire an assistant for a week. Like, do you want to work, get an assistant, have him here tomorrow? I text Dave. It's like 10 PM. I'm like, yo, if you can be here in the morning, like I got you a job. 10 PM. And he's in Austin. Yeah. He's or in Austin. Texas. He books a fucking red eye, hops on a plane that night, flies to LA, like literally showing up pretty much with his bags. And I, I, meet him at the gate meeting him for the first time also trusting like i haven't i've never worked with this dude you know what i mean for him to be and it wasn't like crazy work like he didn't need to do anything insane but i opened it up to being insane like he was just supposed to help me if i needed batteries swapped or cards dumped or whatever like he's my assistant but then i I give him a second camera and i let him shoot cross coverage with me and shit like on conversations and things like that and he literally like walks into the studio and i'm like yo all right destiny's child's in this room no one knows that they're performing at coachella 
just don't look anyone in the eyes and just be chill. You know what I mean? Just come in here. I'll just be tell you what. Chill, Dave. Yeah, be I was chill. Like, I don't know you. Please don't do anything weird and like fuck me <laughs> over on this job. But then fast forward, like Dave killed it. We were on Coachella together. He was my spotter on stage when I was doing the big cinema camera, like shooting the show. He would like make sure I wouldn't fall off the runway and shit. And then uh, we went on tour, and he would shoot second camera at every show. So he traveled with you. Yeah, we went all around the world together. So like, no I shit. literally didn't know this dude, and he just put in hours, you know, with my podcast. Which turned into him going unpaid. from shooting unpaid, unpaid, which went into him getting a fat fucking check, a check I would have killed to get when I was just starting out in L.A. You know, what I mean, he doesn't even live in L.A. yet, and he was getting a check that was better than like, you know, what I mean, I was ever making, to traveling the world, staying in fucking dope four or five star hotels and shit, like seeing the planet. You know, what I mean, filming the biggest artist on earth, went from shooting small shows in fucking Texas, like EDM shows and shit, to that, like crazy so it's like being able to it's the same thing for me like yeah i went from nothing to chris's doc to mary j blige like to all these big artists and influencers and brands i want to take a small little break to give a massive shout out to matt and ariadna dawson for putting on crop conference they've produced five sold out events in three short years through crop and pop-up crop events this coming up april is no exception Expect two full days of workshops, speakers, after parties, and most importantly, building new relationships with like-minded creatives such as yourself. And this year includes big names like Lauren Hom, James Victoria, and John Cantino to name a few. And then you'll also have people like Lisa Quine and Michael Fuchstrader who are also past podcast guests teaching workshops. So here is a podcast listener only deal. When registering for Crop 2019 in April, use the promo code PIZZA. That's P-I-Z-Z-A, in case you don't know how to spell pizza, to automatically be entered to win a free ticket to their pop-up crop fall event. Basically, that's potentially two conferences for the price of one. You cannot beat that. Again, this conference will sell out like all the other ones they've done. So use promo code pizza and register at cropcons.com today. Love you guys. Thanks, Matt. I think that's that's powerful because yes, I sit in these groups and or just in this this world and hear these contents and everything, and I'm like, I I, I don't I'm not in a, a spot where I can make shit tons of money around here locally because people don't necessarily see the value in things. Yeah. They're starting to now, but if I wouldn't have done those first couple murals for free to show that I could do the work, now people want to pay for it. But so many people are trying to demand their value when I mean you don't even personally know your time and your worth of what you can provide if you've never even shown you've done it before. Yeah, no, definitely. And that's hard to, hard to negotiate, you know? And I think that- Hard to negotiate. You have no leverage. Yeah. And I think that you're, you're, you do have value. And I think that like, I, like even this, like Black Widow Cream, I would love to pay my interns. I got two dudes, Nikos and Justin right now that are helping me out with the podcast. We don't have any money coming in and I'm already spending enough money trying to just do the interviews to get the content in the first place, which- there's a lot of money that goes into this shit, yeah. whether it's hosting, it's equipment, your time. Yeah, man. And just even like getting a space, like in LA, it's like getting a space, like even just like- Yeah, my, yours is way more expensive than stupid. mine. I it's, got a space. It's dumb. And it's yeah. like just trying to keep that existing. It's like, all right, hey, like I could pay you. I'm not, I don't have the budget to pay you yet. But at the same time, it's your call. Like I'm already spending the money to make this content exist in the first. I don't have to do this fucking podcast. You know what I mean? We don't have to do this at all. We don't have to teach. We don't have to give back. We don't have to do anything. We can just make Why our do you money. Do this podcast. I f- I feel like we need to educate them. You know what I mean? I feel like I want to give the Ben three five years ago four you know whatever it was four years when did I moved to LA almost three years three and a half years ago. Me being home in Iowa, like trying to figure this shit out on the internet, I would have killed to fucking have an opportunity like Amen. this or a group or just access to information like this. Goosebumps. You feel me? Yeah. So fuck I it. vibe to that, that aligned to that so much. Yeah. And I see so many like tour, you know, especially when it comes to like tour videos, photographers, whatever. I see so many of my peers that don't do this because it's, it's fucking challenging. Like it takes... Think about this shit. We're recording a podcast. Cool. This podcast is going to take us an hour to record. We're already 35 minutes in. We record this podcast. You got to go back and sit down and edit it with your editor. That's going to take you just as long to listen to the podcast as it was to fucking record it. So now you just add on like two hours or however long this shit is. Sometimes mm-hmm. I've, I've recorded a fucking three hour long podcast. Which was you ain't Joe Rogan. Quit it. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know. That was my first one. I was nervous. And I, the next thing I know, three hours pass. I'm like, fuck my bad. 
But like you put in these hours on top of it, I have a video element. Then you have to make social shit. And that's just one podcast. And I'm talking about now getting into 2019 recording like five a week, six a week. Like I want to try to be, I want to, I would prefer to put out more than just twice a week. You know what I mean? Like, so that takes time, money, effort. I need a fucking location to set up my spot. Like you have a mortgage. This is where you run your office out of. Like we, there's so much that comes into it. So to me, it's like, if you see the value in participating in the content I'm creating out of the kindness of my, what I don't want to sound like I'm being a fucking saint or some shit, but I'm just saying like, I'm already going out of my way to create this and I'm giving people an opportunity to ride in the car with me. It may not pay you yet, but look at like the opportunity that comes. I, I, I think it all bases on someone wants to be a part of this because you clearly have this vision. What you're wanting to create is way bigger than yourself. There's a vision, there's something behind it. There's substance, there's purpose, right. there's value. Yeah. And they can see themselves being a small cog or a small role of this larger thing going on too. You know, like yeah. that, that's why wouldn't you want to get on board? But it, it, it starts with you, the the leader of the tribe, I would say right. Seth Godin tribes, read that book, mm. but that's what you're basically creating, right? Everything he talks about what a leader needs to be and what they need to create and what they need to stand for is exactly what you're doing right mm. now. That's dope. It's way dope. My only goal was to not get a, the credit didn't matter. Honestly, I didn't understand how credit even was delegated and shit when I started working on Chris's doc. My only goal was to make Andrew the shit. I, as a director, I want him to have the best product he could ever set out to make. So if I can enhance what he's creating, I did my part. And whatever Everybody is supposed, wins. Yeah, whatever is supposed to come back to me will come back to me. You know what I mean? If, if it's nothing, it is what it is. My whole goal is to give, give, give. Without We talked about this the yeah. other day on Trevor's podcast. Give more than you take. Give more than you take and with no expectation of anything in return. So for me, it's that. It's that all day. And to, to see the people put in the work, like it's cool because Nico's been editing the podcast for me right now. And he's in Chicago. And I, I've met him one time. He came through in L.A. And he has already shot like four or five shows that I've set him up with. You know what I mean? Like any artist that comes through the area, I know there are people. So you may not be paying them necessarily now, but they're opening the doors for them to have success. Yeah. Whether I, it's paid or more relationships for them or dog, more insane opportunities. It's like, cool, you've already shot five respectable artists and have that on your resume. You can build up your Instagram, blah, blah, blah. They tag you, do whatever. But on top of that, it's just now I know you can handle a show. Like, you may have done that show for free, and you've only edited my podcast. I don't know what you're able to create. I've seen your, your videos, blah, 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 but, like, I don't actually know what they could do. Now, cool, boom, you go and shoot a show. I see what it's like. Now, I know that I could hire you for in the future for something that's show-related, concert cap, recaps, whatever, blah, blah, blah. That's where that and, delegation comes yeah, in. And you know build, what I mean? You're building a network. Super network. And it's... For everyone, like everyone has access to it. That's what's fucking like sick to me. A network for content creators running off of caffeine. Literally. Well, some of them don't fuck with it. That's all right. They're They're, probably on like green tea or something. Yeah. That's all right. So, but it's fucking pretty cool. I'm like obsessed with it. It's dope, dude. Usually I want to ask people like, where do you see yourself in five years for this? But I feel like you're already painting that picture and it's going to happen sooner than that. I hope so. I'm I'm loving it, man. Right now it's, it's an interesting battle because- it makes no money, right? Like I made a couple shirts. That was it. That like, was all. Oh, some pins and some stickers. Some pins, stickers, shirts, and mugs. we did like one mug r- round, um, like thirty mugs. You know what I mean? It wasn't like I need. I'm making these mugs to make money. It wasn't anything like that. It was just I just people wanna... want a little slice of the community. Yeah, collectibles and shit. And like, it was cool. But now I need to get into that mode where I could find a way to turn it into a proper business where it could create money where I can now pay. A Dave, I can now pay Nikos and Justin and these guys. Like, I want to keep them around. You know what I mean? They're killing it. So I want to make them happy because I know there's other jobs and I'm giving them other opportunity. Like, Dave should be getting booked up the ass right now because he just did Beyonce and Jay Z. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to find a way where I can keep him in the center and our our we can make our fucking Wednesday episodes crush because he helps. He writes that shit. Like, he's a beast. Like we sit there and have a conversation. And he scripts it all out and then I go back in and change like you know a few. Put things. your own flavor on yeah, it. Yeah, but like it's teamwork and we need that shit. So I'm trying to get, it's trying to find ways where it can make money and can still also, cause my whole goal is I wanted a place for free for creators to come and chat and do the shit. And I want that to always exist. And then I need to find elements where it can turn a profit on certain things. I like the free, but then there's also those people who want the next level, more direct access. Have you ever thought of like an inner circle? Yeah. Membership that, or something. Well, that's what I want to try to figure out with Patreon. Like, do I offer that? Is that like a tier level or whatever? And then people can have access to shit monthly and blah, blah, blah. But I also think that there's a huge room for us to create proper educational content 
courses, things like that, where I could sit down with you and three other of the illest designers and have an entire course of something that I'm not a professional in at all, but we have professional access. Yeah. We have a fucking distribution platform. Bringing we, on people to teach webinars. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I want to do big meetups too, like... I'm I'm trying to figure out what that's going to look like, but I think it would be cool to do something in LA at least to start with and host like monthly meetups or whatever where it's just networking, keynotes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it doesn't have to be anything crazy. We don't have to fucking have like bougie ass like rooms and whatever. It just needs to be a spot where people can come together and I can meet the next fucking all star kid or they can meet and network with their icons and, you know what I mean? Have a good time and really network like in, in person. I feel like that's so key. So how does a, a typical day look like for you? I, I know that, that can vary. Each day is different for you. Like me, I have pretty much a set schedule routine, but like you, your world is insane, especially uh, Lauren moved out there with you. So mm-hmm. you got your girl, yep. cats. Cat. So like what's, yep. what's a typical day look like say when you're touring and then what's a typical day look like when you're like, at home right maybe you still have work or something like that like let's not talk about when you have a free day yeah yeah okay there's no free day so how do you how do you balance this how do you make time for lauren at the same time like that's the hardest part i know for me before emily and i were married Mm -hmm. like dude i was just grinding and selfish and yeah like you need to understand yeah how do you wrap her into your dream as well well, I made her ass move out to L.A. So <laughs> she moved out to L.A. and then you went on a world tour, right? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm on my knees. Dude, uh, shout out to for, Lauren for that one. Yeah, no, she moved out to L.A. literally like three weeks later. Like I think she moved out to L.A. and within three weeks, I got a text asking me to go on tour with Schoolboy Q and around the world, and she went right back to Iowa. So it was like we were paying for a studio in L.A. that no one was at, and she was back home, and it was a fucking mess. But she, you know she's the most supportive. So a, it was ha- like having someone that can support you like that, that sees they, they need to see your potential and yeah. be aligned with your vision too. Yeah. And I, not, and that is a selfish thing to say, like to say you need to be this is, I just got lucky that she was down. You know what I mean? That she has seen whatever I have inside of me. She knows what it is and she supports it in every way possible, which is amazing. And I, you know, I'd be, she should have left 10 times cause it's like, I'm, I am so obsessed with my work real quick. What she do for her job? How can we plug her yeah. and bring her value in LA? Right. So if you're in LA and you are uh, into like uh, um, eyelash extensions, that's like her her thing. Emily just got some recently. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Lauren's the fucking shit at it. So done by Lauren is her Instagram handle. She. It's also cool because her channel's like creative as fuck. You know what I mean? Like she, like we'll make stuff sometimes for her channel, and she most of the time she likes to do it on herself and doesn't like me fucking with it. But she's fucking fire with her content. And Don't her buy brain. Lauren is her handle. Yeah, it's really cool. So she got it's cool. She just did Halsey's lashes, uh, the singer Halsey, yeah. and she's got some cool like popular clients and shit. And I'm meeting all these dope girls too that are at the top that I know I'm gonna try to connect her with now. She's blowing up over there. So Good it's for cool. Her. Yeah, she's Good. been doing it. Want to make sure she gets some love on this. Yeah, it's dope. But so anyway, what was the fucking original question? <laughs> Day in the life. So say one one scenario is you're on tour. Yeah. What's the schedule like for that? And then day in the life of when you're back in LA, you know, and you're grinding trying to set up like, um, like a, a guest for the show. You got like editing to do on the side, or you're networking. And, and stuff. we have a whole production company that we run parallel to all this shit. So like, like okay, here I'll give you an example. Tour. Here's a crazy example. I just finished the U.S. leg of tour, and then we had like three weeks off, four weeks off, maybe three weeks off and then started rehearsals for South Africa, right? For B and J. Like I basically would get up on tour and it just depends. Like, so we would, we would take a bus most of the places or fly. It just depends where we're going, but we have our tour bus. We'll start out a show. You play a show, say we're in Seattle or whatever. And we got to go to Vancouver or something, play a show in Seattle. The show gets done. The content team is immediately like we stayed the longest because <clears throat> we're creating content for Beyonce.com. So we would like, photos videos we're trying to come up with selects and getting things out on the internet like that night the day of the show so we're sitting there working sometimes towards the end of the tour we got really really fast at it but towards at the beginning i would like get done with the show the shows ends at like 11 or whatever i'm there till like 6 a.m creating content in this room in the venue in a fucking nh or a nfl stadium or something like we're sitting there just banging out content and then um we would hop on the tour bus tour bus would take us to the next city you sleep on the tour bus just because you just finished working at six. Sleep for a couple hours, get to the hotel, check in, go sleep a little bit more depending on whatever it was. And then you usually have that day as like a free day. The next day is probably a show day or, or another off day or whatever. But show days, you get back up, you 
you know, you have like till 11, sometimes till two, three. It just depends on the schedule for that day. If we have rehearsals or something before, it just depends. Um, so I could like shoot the shit, go in the city, see whatever. If it's an off day, I could go explore, do whatever. Um, hop on. I brought my electric skateboard, so I just like zoom around, and it was pretty fun to see shit that way. But you just hang out, have breakfast, do whatever, and then go to the show, get into the venue. It's they're fucking huge. Like we're literally playing stadiums. It was a stadium tour. Some stadiums could and hold. And you get the shots. Yeah, I would try to get some money shots. You go where, like, most people won't go for a shot. Yeah, I'll literally be shooting on stage behind B&J and then venture off to go to the top highest point in the stadium. And it took me, like, fucking 10 shows to realize that there's elevators. <laughs> there, that there's, like... So you're going Spider-Man and the, just scaling walls? I was walking, bro. <laughs> I was I was putting in steps. Like, it was absurd how many... Like, I would be whooped after that shit. And then you have to stay up and edit. You know what I mean? It was intense. Before the show, you, you basically get in there, you find your your battle station, you set up all your stuff, we're charging batteries, doing whatever. If there's something to shoot before, if B&J are doing something, I'll be with them. We'd get catering, so you get lunch, dinner, whatever. And then the show starts, so you just capture... I always just try to find different ways to capture the day. Like, if I'm highlighting before, maybe we go out in the city and shoot some shit. Or, you know, it just depends Are you on, directing it? Yeah, I mean, it's just like kind of us running. It was me and Dave. It was, yeah. a, it was just us running around trying to figure out what we wanted to capture for the day. So um, when we shot the show, Dave would always have like a long lens and would shoot like really tight beauty shots. And then I would have like a stabilizer and try to get the more cinematic, like quick moving shots where there was just like a, a little life to the way the camera would position on the show. So, you know, we both had separate roles and it would crush. But then, yeah, the show gets done. You fucking hop in the edit room and go hammer again and then get back on the bus and go to the next spot. But sometimes we'd have like two days off in between a show and you could really go see some shit. Like it was cool. We're at Q's tour. We were playing shows like every night. So you'd get to the venue. You're just so tired. Like you get to the venue, you edit some more from the night before the show happens. You edit more. You get to the next venue. It's more of a grind. It was shitty. Like I didn't get to see much of anything. Like I think I saw fucking the Eiffel Tower once and like that was it. Like when we were in Paris, but this tour we had days off and we could see shit and, go explore and I was like they wanted us to cover the city so I got to go get paid to go in see shit you know what I mean yeah, like that's dope. go see the Coliseum and things like that like things that I would never it was cool so that's kind of the day in the life on tour and then uh, uh at, at home like I said like we're doing production shit so like say I just got off the US tour came home immediately started doing black window cream shit so me and Dave started putting in work that's when we launched the morning roast so I'm scheduling and trying to interview my friends and trying to see who's in town and can meet up and do the podcast and create that content and I really like only want to do black window cream especially after that tour it's like I want to get off the road so and you don't have any other jobs lined up at the I moment I try not to like okay. I, I get asked to do things and I'm trying to delegate so I'll say I'll, I'll send out it's like gotta a be a hell yes opportunity for you to yeah. say yes to in order to say no to something yeah. black with no cream related. but we have the production company so the idea is like when people are asking me for jobs if I'm not able to do it I could send one of my guys you know what I mean and that's another thing why black window cream is dope is because I'm building relationships and creating like finding creators that can handle this workload and shit like even in New York I was in New York one time and EA wanted me to do a job I couldn't do it so I sent a dude from Chicago to do it and he was able to shoot it and I got the coverage where I could have just said no and then the job's just out of my hands and I have nothing to do with it you know what I mean mm -hmm. so but like I I did get asked to do um to direct this spot for Battlefield the it's like the a game? Battlefield 5 yeah game for EA and uh that was in New York with Trevor Noah who's on the yeah. Today Show King Batch and Amanda Cerny, who are like YouTube Viners, and Stone Mountain, who's like a professional video gamer, uh, streamer or whatever. So I had to like fly to New York real quick, do that job, come back, start rehearsals, go to Africa. While I'm doing all of going to Africa and being in Africa, I'm like editing the spots for EA, like turning that around, like a big budget job. So I'm trying to stay on top of everything and like f finish all the content. You know what I mean? There, there was so much shit that was happening it's and, and it's always like that like I say I don't want to do any jobs when I get back to LA and I guarantee you something's gonna fucking fall on my lap that I'm gonna be like alright I need to direct this thing or whatever or edit this project or make a documentary about something but I'm trying to like separate the two and, and be able to do everything parallel you just did Lewis House's documentary yeah. too coming out yeah Lewis House's a beast so I don't know when that movie's dropping where distribution's I, I always see, a pain I got to yes. see the early cut clip. yeah I was like oh shit that's yeah. my dude that's, yeah. that's Ben that's crazy yeah. yeah you were at the summit of greatness so yep. he has thank a, you for 
the pep talk with that. Oh, I, yeah. I plugged you in that episode. 101. 101. Boom. Yep. Tight. Yep. No, but there's always something happening. I just, it's trying to find a balance. And like you said, the relationship at the end of the day is the most challenging thing to find time for because you're so caught up in work. You have to find ways to like cut ties with certain things, which I struggle with all the time. It's, it's an ongoing thing. Like I work. Getting things off your plate is so hard when yeah. you're, you're become so good at delegating though. And that's been like my biggest that's thing the this biggest year has been delegating and hiring out heat. and stop trying to like own everything yeah you have you to, let to grind go. yourself to an early grave yeah early gray hairs yeah, yeah. it sucks yeah. but i think if you can learn how to let certain things go you're gonna win like even the ea job like i edited everything and i should have let someone else edit it but the way we did it was such a last minute project it was like organization was nuts so i was like i know exactly how it needs to be created it would probably just be easier if i just do it versus have to Explain work with it. an editor and yeah but like ideally it would have been better just to leave it with an editor have them take care of it me give notes they you know they spend the time doing it they get the check for it and it would have made sense but i instead thought i could do it and now imagine i'm working on call all the time in fucking a new country I've never been to, capturing the biggest artists in the world, and then any free time I'm going straight back to my computer and editing in my hotel. So I get home at like one in the morning. I'm working until like four or five because the client's awake in in Florida. Yeah. And I'm just like, fuck. You know what I mean? It was it was intense, but got it all done. So it was cool. And the videos did they smashed it. Was so dope. the next wave is saying yes to only hell yes things and getting everything else on your plate to focus on big picture. Yeah, and delegating. Like, if it's not a hell yes thing, it still can be handled by our team. You know what yeah. I mean? So as we build, right now, our, we haven't launched the company, but we're building a production company. Me and Andrew, the dude that did Chris's doc, our running name right now is Be A Human because the idea is just be a good fucking human. So I like that. We're trying to build it out. So that production company will have its own existence and Black Widow Cream can have its own. I just want to be able to bounce between both of them yeah. seamlessly. You can and, plug and connect as needed. Yeah. But cool. it's important to build a team. So that's what I'm focusing on. Okay. Well, um, before we dive into a rapid fire question, a couple small things. What's one piece of advice you give to your past self when you were just starting out? I think it, literally what we just talked about, being able to delegate. When you're just starting out, are you able to delegate though? Don't no. you got to figure it out? But but I do think that you can. <clears throat> so say say whatever, you're just starting out and, and someone needs, like, the, like for me, it was video, right? So if I'm going to go make a video and someone wants VFX or something, I'm going to spend two weeks trying to learn that VFX where I know I could have paid someone to do the VFX and I probably wouldn't have made any money, but I could have gotten that job done two weeks earlier. And within those next two weeks, I would have been free to have made more content and have made more money, which may not have needed VFX, which would have been a full check for myself. I could have just spent the time doing what I'm good at versus trying to learn everything. I do think it's important to learn everything, but I think being able to find a way to delegate as soon as you have the opportunity to do it. I know not, you know, 500 bucks comes to you and you're like, fuck, I need that because rent's due and all this shit. And I cannot give 200 of that away. And that's the thing. So you are, you push yourself, but you can get caught up in that where you only do that. You know what I mean? You mm -hmm. only, you keep making that excuse. Even when you, when the checks start to roll in and they're, they're better and they're fatter and you're able to be like, you could spend a little bit of money, but you want to keep all that because you're trying to make your fucking salary and all this shit. But as soon as I got to a position where we've delegated parts of the budget, my life becomes simpler and I can enjoy what I'm creating more versus stressing myself out, trying to do something I'm not great at. You know what I mean? So I would at least put that in my ear now. You know what I mean? And hope that I can run with it when the time comes. So yeah, like you said, you might not be able to to slide someone money at the beginning, but it's something to pay attention to for the time where you. This could. is definitely something I wish I would have done like two years ago, as I've been like hustling and building stuff. So, yeah, starting out with just the podcast, that would have been a huge one as delegation. So for sure, actually, let's move right into rapid fire questions. I asked you this last year, but maybe it's changed because you've been all over the world. Mm. If you were on death row, what would your last slice of pizza be? Fuck, that's not a pizza. <laughs> someone should make it man you might make fun of me but I just fuck with cheese pizza and, and onions and cheese pizza and onions yeah gross from Papa John's Papa John's that's fine <laughs> I'm Casey's hell yeah Casey's too okay shit if I'm in Iowa it's breakfast pizza from Casey's okay yeah people give me a hard time because it's like gas station pizza I'm like dude you don't understand I think we talked did we talk about this I, I brought I School Q and shit to Casey's oh that's right yeah 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 okay cause I'm like this shit I promise you it's the yep, one yep and it bangs. <laughs> this is the one. If you're ever coming through Iowa or, or wherever Casey's Anywhere General Stores. Anywhere Midwest-ish. Yeah. Yeah. You clutch pizza. They're famous for pizza. It's the tagline. All right. It's Casey's General Store. It's more than just gas. Is that what it is? General Store, yeah. I haven't had it since I've been home yet. 
Station's right I got, there. I know, it's but I came even... home sick and I like didn't. You know, you have to. If pee. you didn't have like a Yo, dentist do you drink or pizza? something, do you drink pizza with? Uh... Do I drink pizza? Oh no, sorry. Do you drink milk with your pizza? Yeah. Okay, cool. I grew up doing that. We we've cut back on dairy. Yeah. <laughs> Yet I'm eating pizza. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, we, we cut we, back, we cut... but my whole brand surrounds the fucking yeah, cheese. Yeah, yeah, no ice cream, no other any kinds of cheese, but pizza every now and then, just not twice three times a week, if you like came here to listen to this podcast from me if like you're a fan of my shit and you don't know scotty you need to check he, this dude draws the fuck out of pizza the episode artwork is pizza in it yeah so beast wow rapid fire sorry no you're, you're good <laughs> people think milk with pizza is weird i'm like no no i grew up with that no all my LA people are like what the fuck yeah or putting ketchup on my eggs hell yeah i love it yep do you okay if you could have lunch with one person dead or alive who would it be and why I think Spike Jones. He's a fucking fantastic director. I don't know. I remember watching his skateboard film, Yeah Right, back in the day, and he did this thing where he put like green, green tape on all the skateboards, and then he made them disappear in, in VFX, and so it just looked like dudes were grinding, just standing on rails and shit. It was insane. And this dude has created the best shit I've ever seen, and he's like such an iconic director. So yeah, it'd be him. Okay, word. Who's the next artist, influencer, or celebrity you want to work with? It's hard to do this shit as rapid fire, bro. These are hard. It's, it, it doesn't need to be rapid fire. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of, you know. You can even name like two or three. I don't really like care. Like for me, I'm targeting someone like Kobe Bryant to be on the show one day. That would be clutch. Yeah. You heard Lewis did hit. Oh, Lewis did Kobe. I know. That's what got me back that's into this true. podcast again. I guess, I, yeah, I could look at um, doing shit like that. I think it'd be cool. You can even be like, yeah, an, an interview guest. Doesn't yeah. necessarily have to be like creating content for him. I think as I get bigger in this space and, and more validated as like a podcast host, it'd be cool to do. I love interviewing artists too on top of, like, I think it would be cool to get into a space where I could interview an artist and their videographer and their photographer mm, together. Team. You know what I mean? Like, it's interesting to hear like what they look for in that space or even for design and things like when it comes to branding, like it's really interesting. Visual art. Yeah. yeah. So if I could get into a space where I could do more artists, maybe that'd be cool. I do talk to, I've, I just had a couple rappers on the show that were, that are killing it right now too. And so it's like, that part of it's growing, but fuck, I don't know. Having working with someone, I don't really. Michael B. Jordan would be cool. He seems pretty dope. That's an answer to this question. Thank you for Sorry. the rapidness. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I don't know. It's just hard. I don't Fire know. answer, non rapid though. Fuck. Okay, where is the best information for video editing tips and tricks if it's not on the Black with No Cream network by now? Hmm. Do you have a specific YouTube channel or any type of online courses that you recommend the most? I always tell people to go to Justin Odisha's YouTube channel and Olufemi Tutorial's YouTube channel. These two dudes are really, really good when it comes to like- Do you just have the second second dude on your podcast? I had both of them on my podcast. Yeah. Okay. They're both fire. Justin's the one I talked to for three hours because I didn't know how to do a podcast. We talked about him working at a gym, clean up sweat. It had nothing to do with. Hey, I've done that job too. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. But we talked about it for like an hour. It was like, you know, I mean, three hours is like. I take it it didn't work out. It didn't work out. It, it got him to the next step, you know? That's a bad pun. You're funny. Where do you seek your inspiration online and offline? Instagram. I think there's a lot of cool shit on Instagram. I like thumb fucking that screen for a while and just seeing what's out there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> just I haven't heard that before. Yeah. Um, and YouTube. I fucking love, I, I get so inspired by YouTube. I think there's a lot of like amazing creators out there and they're always pushing the limits with this shit. Do you shit. like following just things that interest you or just things in the video uh, photo space or do you follow like other mm. kind of visual artists? No, and I, other- I love watching you and Joey. Like you guys are shit. I, I'll sit there and see that. Like, my background on my screen is your fucking artwork That's right so now. That's so dope. Don't lose sight of why you started. I'm hey, like, I actually photoshopped this so it'd be full vertical, bro. That, that works. Sorry. I could have just went and it's customized it. Don't worry 19, about nothing. 19, 20, 10, 80, whatever you need. Yeah, I got but, it. Don't worry about it. But I, I, I like to anything. I, I, I find creativeness in, in everything. Like, I think that everyone has something to offer. And even if it's, like I said, like delegate, but I'm very interested in everything. I can talk with a lot of different sides of the creative process, which helps me direct it helps me create you know you have that extroverted muscle where you can just plop yourself in a situation f- drill down to find that immediate connection yeah and then have something in common with someone. totally Th- yeah. that's a gift yeah that's that helps me connect with artists like you know what i mean like with that's, chris i was able to connect with chris like i'm learning more and more like that is one of the most best gifts someone could have in order to find success because totally. it's all about relationships yeah absolutely 100 so, all right what about offline 
mm. you're less just skateboard you go like hiking uh, yeah. or backpacking or anything crazy. yeah like honestly like i love being home because i i don't i never drive in la because i am on my skateboard when i'm on my skateboard i'm just like ripping through la electric skateboard going fucking 24 miles an hour like with my airpods and i'm just jamming music and just getting to where i go and that feels like freeing it kind of resets your brain and your stories are insane and i always make dumb stories but like i love i love being able to like when i drive calling people like i like calling my creative friends and just having conversations podcasts are great because i love listening to this but that's online still but like being able to just chat with people or like going and meeting up with someone and not having to be on instagram not having to be on the internet at all unplugged unplugged is great but there's something about driving and having a conversation like i'll call people and just start talking like we'll just have like oh cool i have 45 minute drive in a day and age where people hate talking on your phone that's what you love i like yeah get off to that shit it's fucking awesome like we can just i can like talk get myself motivated and shit. Like I'll just call, you know, there's like a select few people. I just hop on a phone and just call right away. Cause I need the motivation that day. Or something. Yeah. So I don't know. Just chat, like talk with people. Well, where can people go to follow and support you online? If they want to join the movement and they want to follow your content, my content is just on it. I really only post on Instagram black or uh, Ben reverse world. So you can find that shit there. And then I have the black window cream Instagram. So we're trying to create and like pull different inspiration and share shit. That's really cool on there. Um, and then, yeah, if you try to join Black Window Cream, it's just bwnc.com slash join. You can f- hop in there and fill out that fucking little form. I try to get rid of some of the questions so it's not as long anymore. Not as intimidating. Yeah, but... As big as a barrier. Yeah, but I think if you want it, you'll do it. So, that's it. That's really the only way. Word. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. I know you got back-to-back appointments. You got to head back to LA and start the grind all over yeah. again. So, I appreciate you taking time, coming here for the holidays, jumping on as the second official friend of the podcast coming back on for an episode that that's that's dope so i appreciate you man thank you you so much keep inspiring absolutely bro word all right pc family ben haggerty aka ben real verse world Ben has one of the craziest and most inspiring stories and i feel stupid lucky to have him as a friend This dude constantly inspires me to think bigger, stay hungry, and to keep serving my audience top of mind. So Ben, thank you so much for showing up and building community where people can learn and connect. 2019 is going to be massive for you and you know the drill. If what Ben had to say today made an impact on you, go show him some love and connect with him on his social handles that he mentioned earlier. Again, thanks Ben. I appreciate you. If you've been enjoying what you hear and you want to support the growth of the show, here are two ways you can make that happen. If you'd like to support the show financially, head on over to patreon.com slash perspective podcast and you can back each episode of the show. The second way to support the show is by subscribing and leaving a rating and review over on Apple Podcasts. It not only helps the show climb up the charts in the design category by you subscribing, but it also lets me return the love by giving you a shout out as a listener of the week. And it also gets your name mentioned in the show notes in the newsletter for leaving that rating and review. So all three is what you have to do. And again, I'm also able to read international reviews like this one. So the listener of the week this week goes to Spees1 from UK. They titled it, love it. And they kept this one short and simple. Followed this guy for one year on Instagram, then found his podcast. Amazing advice. Very, very helpful. Nice to know some ways to combat the struggles of being a creative. That's all it takes. Simple, short, to the point. And if you leave a review, feel free to tuck in your Instagram handle there so I can share that as well. And as I wrap things up, I want to give a huge thank you to my podcast editor, Anya Brennan, and my executive assistant, Paige Garland. I could not do this without you two. Thank you so much for all your help. And also, a huge shout out goes to Nick Jenkins of Bluka for all the dope theme music you hear on this show. He's got a new EP drop in January 22nd called Foreign Objects. So please make sure to go support him at SoundCloud, Spotify, and say what's up to him on Instagram at Bluka. That's B L O O K A H. And as you finish off your week strong, you know I've got to continue to encourage you to keep showing up, keep putting in the work, and keep creating. You got this.